Hey guys, Boone down south here. So just got back from a Kentucky hunting trip with Iron Man Outdoors. I want to kind of in this video kind of just tell you about you know what it was like on this Kentucky trip. You know I did an Iron Man hunt last year in Alabama in January. Had a great time. Shot a nice buck down there. Hopefully I'm gonna be picking up the uh, Euro mount when I get back there this year. But I decided to try Kentucky this year, and so I did that. Like I said, we're just kind of gonna go over the kind of places we hunted, what all we did, you know, the kind of experience of it all, just kind of give you an idea of what it's like. Uh, hunting with Iron Man Outdoors. If you would, just uh, stick around and hit that like and subscribe. So the first morning I was in a Millennium ladder stand. It was overlooking this creek bottom. And the top of that stand was almost to the edge of the ag field up there. And that's the sun coming up behind me there. Really beautiful spot. This little creek bottom here. And uh, that morning had these little group of otters come by, which I thought was pretty cool because Although I've seen otters in rivers before when I'm fishing, I've never seen them run through the woods like this. So I thought that was kind of neat. But uh, we had rain forecast that afternoon. I did see a deer mid-morning here. Uh, had some rain forecasts, so we switched up to a, I think they call this the Texas Shooting House. And so these are some other options overseas. These ag fields, these big, big ag fields out here. And a lot of a lot of big deer have been killed out of these these different setups that I have here. And so just kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. And that night I saw a few deer out in the distance there, some of those outcroppings there. But then this little buddy comes up about the time I'm ready to get out of my stand or, or shortly before and uh, just kind of made a beeline right from, he came 300 yards away and came right over to my my uh, blind there. Did some circles out in front of it and everything. It was kind of kind of crazy, but fortunately he, uh, he left before I had to get down. These are fields, y'all. Okay, yeah, it's the second morning, really the second midday. Uh, poured rain nonstop. These fields are a soupy, soupy mess. I'll show you some pictures here on some video clips on the way in. So I had to rethink our strategy because I wanted to hunt this bottom the time just today morning, but it's just, uh, I think it's going to be three foot of water down there. Um, so I've got a different spot now than this box blind. There's a pinch point down here, and so. We're gonna see how this goes. It's rainy, 67 degrees, very warm. So uh, anyway, that's kind of where we're at. So uh, we're gonna make the best of it. And uh, when this rain stops, maybe things will come alive. So that's what we're hoping for. So finally the rain stopped and shortly after the rain stopped, this uh, small buck came out and was crossing the edge of the field there, about hundred yards out or so. And I uh, really didn't see any other deer midday. And it basically just set up for the evening hunt Lots of birds migrating, golly. I mean, this thing went on for 10 minutes, these birds. They just did not stop. I mean, there had to be just hundreds of thousands of these things. It was really crazy, man. Just kind of want to give you the view from the stand, what I could see. It was about 100 yards across this bid point here. Looking back, is a big field we came across to get in here. So a little bit later, first I had this uh, a doe come out. Then this buck, little buck came in, started running around, running her off. And they kept kind of playing tag with each other, coming back. The buck would come in, the doe would come in. And, and this went on most of the evening. Finally, when that little buck got done eating, he just came back across the field there. And then he started heading towards me, actually. He probably closed the gap to about, I'm guessing, about 50 yards or so from the blind before we just kind of headed off towards the river bottom. So, But I uh, didn't see any big bucks on day two here, but it was really bad weather. Like we said, it rained all night. I really think that affected the, the deer on this particular property. But, you know, that's hunting. That's what happens. So, anyway, um, enjoy just watching these deer tonight. Don't know if you can hear that turkey gobbling there, but turkey was gobbling quite a bit. It was day three. We're on a different farm. And up on this ridge, that's just a drainage ditch that's filled up from all the rain. But this is super beautiful, perfect layout. I mean, they're... I was sitting on the edge of a saddle on this ridge top. Just like a fantastic place to be hunting. It was uh, really, really nice here. So I saw one deer kind of far out right after daylight, but about mid-morning, this small buck comes in and he just kind of heads in and uh, just see how that plays out here. But it was uh, enjoyable seeing a deer. In fact, I realized after this hunt, I saw deer on every single hunt I was on on this trip. So it was, uh, it was a good hunt.
you know, after he saw me, he kind of jumped back a little bit. And uh, I think he realized I didn't know really what I saw. I mean, I was wearing that hex outfit, um, but he seemed to really never look back at me and just uh, turn around and kind of went right back where he was going and never looked at me again. Now, was it a hex or was it just because he's a very young and dumb deer? I don't know. Hey guys, before we go any further, I'm standing here with Patrick Tyndall. He's the founder of Ironman Outdoors. So I'm going to turn it over to him and let him give you a little bit of info about this organization. So hold tight. Hey, I'm Patrick Tyndall with Ironman Outdoors. And about uh, almost 20 years ago in my Sunday school class, we began taking groups of men on hunting retreats. And we had in the evenings, we have what we call a manhood discussion. And we put guys in the right atmosphere to take off their camo. And uh, we've, we've had a great weekend here in Kentucky. We've killed a few bucks. I think we got three nice ones on the ground so far. I hope everybody, you know, kills a big one this afternoon. It's the last afternoon of the retreat. But we've had some wonderful manhood discussions, um, talk about things that men struggle with. And I know it's, I know I've gotten a lot out of it and, and iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. Hey, we can even sharpen Ken Boone. He's a great guy. So thanks for joining us. All right, this was the last afternoon. I'm in the shooting house here overlooking this just gorgeous farm. It's all planted in rape out there, and it just uh, looked amazing. We saw this, uh, I thought he was a four point, but he looked super wide and super tall when I could see him through the binoculars. But Patrick was able to see this guy also, and I guess he got closer there. And this guy was a six point, but he was at least 15 inches wide. And I mean, he had some some massive space between his ears. He's gonna be a beautiful deer another another two years. I mean, just, just beautiful. But uh, yeah, good afternoon sitting out here. It was very, very beautiful. All right, four-wheeler ride means one thing. It means there's a deer down. So one of the guys, I heard him shot about half hour before it got dark, and uh, we're heading there to uh, check this out. Tell me a story, man. What happened? Yeah, so the doe came out around 4.30, was feeding in the food plot, and I seen her checking over her shoulder, so I figured something was coming. So I had her ranged, had my rifle on her, and scoped in, and then out this trail I saw antlers sticking up. I was watching him head on for about 30 seconds and then turn broadside. I counted five times on the left side and, oh, then, wow. I, and then I let him have it. Wow, that's awesome. Did he, he get right down? He couldn't hold it. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like here, hey? Oh, look at that baby. Look at that baby. Golly. Yeah, look at, guys, look at that. Yeah, How big this thing is, guys? Woo. Oh, this is a heavy deer. Look at that. Yeah. Very nice, man. Thank you. Congratulations, dude. Dude, look at the body on this thing that Andrew got. It is bigger sweet. What's that? It's bigger than me. It is huge, man. This is a massive buck. Awesome. I know, after Mr. Pete's cooking. Look at that. Look at that right there. <laughs> look at that, guys. Good job, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right john got this uh was it the first day you got this john yeah we sat uh all day saturday and shot this about five o'clock on saturday evening nice, nice buck there and i uh, already got it uh taken care of with the euro mount looks good man how long was the shot for that guy uh probably like 65 yards or so nice so nice I'm wearing still. yeah very nice buck very nice buck good job man thank you all right this one was taken by james and he was just super thrilled with this buck and he was keeping that thing out for a mount. And then uh, Matt got this one on the first day. And this was the biggest rack deer. I think it was over 17 and a half inches wide. Really nice. All right, guys. So as you can see, I didn't score on a deer on this trip, but that's how hunting is. You don't always get one. That's why they call it hunting, not getting, right? So anyway, a lot of guys got some, some nice deer on this trip. Really happy for those guys and congratulations go out to them. Um, some of them, I believe, was their biggest deer they've ever killed kind of thing. It was a good trip overall, great fellowship, good time with all the guys, just a really enjoyable hunt, guys. So uh, I'll put a link down for Ironman Outdoors so you can check it out. They have several hunts throughout the season, even some off-season for some hog hunts and stuff like that in different places. So anyway, uh, really something you guys should, should check out, man. Uh, it, it's a good organization. It's a good ministry. Really uh, thrilled to be able to go on these hunts with these guys. So anyway, if you would, hit that like and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>